Hello, my name is uh, Aurora Berg. Uh, thank you all for finding the way up this room. Uh, together with me, it's Frederick Forrest Hansen, and um, uh, we will give you this two-part session um, presentation uh, about Derbit and um, how we organically managed to top the iOS charts twice. Um, so in the first part, I will focusing, uh, I'll be focusing on marketing, and uh, Fred will then follow up with uh, design. Uh, so just to give you the brief background, um, back in 2012, in December, uh, three months after we launched our game Funrun, it managed to rank uh, as number one in the US App Store without any paid user acquisition. Uh, and we managed to do the same thing this December uh, with our sequel, Fenrin 2. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, introduce you to uh, Fenrin itself, the background for why we created that game. Uh, so back in 2011, uh, the founders of Dirty Bit uh, created a game that they thought would be the next big thing. Uh, unfortunately, it looked too much like uh, other physics puzzle game like Angry Birds. Um, so they really understood that they needed to stand out from the crowd for their next game. So what they did was that they reviewed the market space for uh, apps at the time in the store. Uh, and they saw that there were a lot of single-player uh, games, short session, and also long session games. You also seen that there were a few turn-based multiplayer games. They were still lacking a lot of games uh, in the synchronous multiplayer space. Um, at the same time, uh, they remembered uh, playing Mario Kart. Who here played Mario Kart? Quite a few of you. Uh, and I guess you remember from playing Mario Kart that you were sitting next to your friends, watching the split screen and seeing their reaction when you threw the banana uh, and they slid, uh, and you won. And uh, this experience uh, is similar to what these guys are experiencing here. <laughs> yeah! yeah! First, baby! No, no! <laughs> So with that in mind, they decided to tackle this challenge of creating a synchronous multiplayer game for mobile uh, and decided uh, it would be a fun run. So this is the trailer that describes the game. So uh, it's a little bit shocking, a little bit gory. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so this this presentation, uh, my part of it, will uh, talk about the, what we call the Fundman formula, the way we think uh, is reason behind its viral success. Um, at the same time, it's important to emphasize a few things. Uh, when we launched the game, there were no easy way to add friends even though it's a multiplayer game. So there were no friends integration through Facebook or uh, connections that you had on your uh, mobile. Also, no push notifications to ensure retention. There were no analytics, no featuring, and most importantly, no use requisition. Um, and for those of you who have published games uh, or work with marketing, uh, this list probably seems familiar to a lot of you. Um, I like to call it a marketing 101 list, what we should have had in the game. Uh, so I'll touch back on that later. Uh, so now let's dig into the Fenrin formula. And this is, I hope a few of these steps um, are steps that you can adapt into your games. Um, but uh, I also want to emphasize that we believe uh, it's important that the game needs to be unique and different from what's already in the store for these steps to really um, 
be useful. So first and foremost, um, the name of the app is really, really crucial. Uh, we chose Fun Run, which is short and catchy and rhymes. Uh, there were other games uh, and apps in general that had the title of Fun Run, um, but we still chose it because they didn't have a large user base. Uh, secondly, um, we have this uh, tw uh, tip section within a game where we communicate with players. Uh, here we say, tweet about hashtag Fun Run for a chance to win 10,000 coins. It's a contest we had. Uh, and what happened uh, was that people started to use this hashtag to recruit friends because it was so hard to add friends with the game. And what we saw was that people like Yolanda here writes on Twitter, download hashtag Fun Run and add me. And when we did this uh, campaign, uh, the download numbers doubled the next day. And it started to really exponentially increase. And we saw people using the hashtag FunRun for anything that was related to the game. Like Rudy here, who's posting this picture on Instagram, where it says, I think the teacher gave up the no phone rule, hashtag FunRun. So um, we think it's important that you create a way for users to talk about the game, an easy uh, way to explain the game. Uh, for us, hashtag fun run have worked really well. Uh, secondly, uh, is like creating something that uh, emphasizes the word of mouth effect. You're more likely to share something when it touches a really frustrated feeling of yours, like here, where um, someone on Twitter writes, I don't usually want to kill people, but when I'm due, I'm probably playing Fun Run. Uh, and it's an effect where if you get so frustrated, like with Flappy Birds, you just want to scream about it, and uh, it's likely that it gets shared. On the other side, if it's a very positive experience, they're also going to share it. Uh, another tweet here, or a Google Play review, is John here, who says, Amazing, I quit my job, divorced my wife because this app is so addictive. Who doesn't want to try a game that is described this way? Unless you're in a social situation where it's not cool. Um, so, uh, fourth, uh, timing has been really, really crucial to this as well. To like pull the three others together. Uh, this is the app any charts that shows um, what it looked like from, from launch until we ranked number one. So the game was launched in September. It took about three months for it to gain this traction. And so uh, we had a lot of updates uh, during this period. So it wasn't like it was launched and then we, we left the game. Um, this is when we do the first hashtag fun run contest. Uh, and it's at a point where you see how it starts to grow afterwards. And then, uh, as I touched on earlier, um, this is also the time where high school kids in the US have their exams. And this is a really good time, because if you manage to get their attention, uh, they will love you, uh, because they are looking for ways to procrastinate in this time. I'm sure you all feel guilty about that when you had your exams, too. Uh, and this is when we reached number one on the App Store. So when we had the hashtag fun run uh, contest, we also had a momentum. We had about 300,000 downloads and 7,000 new downloads a day. And also feel that um, it's important uh, for you to know those numbers, because if you just have a lot of contests, but you don't have the momentum to, to use um, for those contests to be um, valuable, uh, it will be hard. Uh, and also, the use of hashtag FunRun resulted in being trending worldwide on Twitter in this period as well, so that helped a lot. So this was up until uh, we managed to rank number one. So what happened afterwards? Um, all the way, we've been updating the game uh, with new content, sometimes new features, and new levels and, and themes. 
but the focus has been content, uh, like customizable content. Um, we run that on a three to five week cycle. In addition to that, uh, we have introduced a rare and exclusive avatar. Uh, we, it was first something that we as the developers got in the game, but we didn't play enough uh, or rank high enough for users to notice. Uh, so then we gave it to our top player, and people started to ask about what is this hashtag Golden Fox, and and we decided we uh, would do more about it. So we created weekly leaderboards where only the best player of the week would get it. Um, so uh, this has been a very useful thing, and uh, this fall we actually introduced a new character like this, a Diamond Doe, uh, which made. Uh, it's um, appealing to the users that already had the Golden Fox. Uh, we also have a Golden Fox Weeks where we, where we give away the Golden Fox for free uh, to people that participate in contests. So um, what happens during the life cycle of Fun Run then is that uh, when, when we see uh, that we uh, meet number one, uh, there in December, uh, we see that we have a trend because there's, uh, we lose momentum all the way from uh, about March, and then it starts to pick back up again in October. And that's also about the time you introduce the Golden Fox. And we see that during this time, without us really asking for, the, for it, people are bringing back Fun Run on Twitter. So we organically managed to rank uh, number 70 that year. Um, so then this year, or before Christmas, we also see the same thing happening. People are bringing back Fun Run as they have the trigger effect of the Christmas and exams being something that they want to do again. Um, so this, uh, with that in mind, we decided, and Frederick will talk more about um, this, uh, we decided to create a sequel to the game. So when we, when we launched the game, we had a lot of different marketing tactics uh, planned out. Um, and the first and most important was the cross-motion. Uh, we were told that it would be really hard to move the players, uh, but we actually had a 50% install rate on the clicks when we showed this ad. Uh, and what happened was that uh, we showed this ad, and we moved a lot of users, but in addition, they started to scream on Twitter. So we had tweets like these, where Funrun came out just in time for, to distract me before finals, and the other one, they had to release Funrun 2 in exams time. Uh, and the tweets just came popping in, and, and we got a momentum that was really, really strong. So instead of actually doing all the other marketing initiatives we had planned out, we had to monitor um, social media a lot, uh, so we didn't have time to do that. Uh, and here's another tweet uh, where you see a classroom where a lot of people are playing Fun Run. And, and the phrase Fun Run 2 then resulted trending worldwide, ranking 70, number 7 on Twitter at the same time. And all of this within 24 hours, and we were suddenly number 2 on the US App Store. Unfortunately, Trigger Crack. Um, had its crack on the users as well, and um, they had even better social engagement than we managed to do. Uh, so we were ranking number two for 12 days, and really happy about that. So to summarize the, all these topics that I've walked you through, uh, the Fun Formula, we feel that like the name is really important. So try and find a catchy name that people uh, understand and are easily uh, to share. Find something that people can communicate your game with. Uh, for us, hashtag Fun Run has been working really, really well, and now we have hashtag Fun Run 2, which has been working really well as well. Um, the third is, if you manage to create something that can use the word-of-mouth effect, that is absolutely the best thing for users to share um, the game for you. Um, the first is timing. Like all of this, like separately, I don't think they would be working um, the way it has. But put together uh, this way, 
um, has been really important. Uh, five, uh, or fifth, we, we have been updating frequently, and uh, it's been keeping the user base engaged. Um, also, the introduction of a rare and exclusive avatar has been very, very useful. Uh, it's been something that the, the really um, active players have been uh, appreciating a lot. Um, then for, for the sequel, uh, the new timing, like really understanding when the users are likely to be looking for a game and, and wanting to play your game. For us, it's been Christmas, been the best month. Um, and also the cross-motion. Uh, we tested cross-motion uh, before we decided on, on which image should be uh, used the most, and it was really, really effective for us. So, uh, with that, um, Frederick. All right, so my name is Frederick Forshansen. Um, I'm the lead game designer over at 30 Bit. I uh, joined during the first hiring round of, uh, after following the success of the original fun run. Um, and recently I got kind of the, the uh, responsibility to repeat the success with the sequel Aurora has been dipping into. So briefly what I'm going to talk about is a little bit of background uh, on, the, on the new project and uh, the steps before the, the sequel. And I will also dip into the, the building blocks itself uh, on a very foundational level uh, in terms of what makes Fanuna success from a design perspective, so to speak. Um, and uh, then again, briefly how we went about to actually developing, pro pro producing the, the sequel and the results uh, thereafter. So, following the success, as mentioned, we, we as a company grew. We went from three to eight people, uh, and with more people comes more ideas, good ideas, and we started basically straight on to a new project, and it was not a fun one related project. Uh, it's a game called Dino Dash. Um, many of you have probably not heard of it, because it wasn't really the success we wanted. It, was this, it looked like something that was a really solid concept at the time. We had cool ideas, went a little bit too deep into um, complexity and so forth. Um, but the Without going into a postmortem of the project, um, it didn't. It, 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 it was lacking a creative vision uh, from the start, and it suffered a little bit from what we can call an identity crisis uh, in terms of our relationship to Funrun. So instead, we went about to revive Funrun, go with a sequel. Uh, we had a lot of new people. We had learned a lot from the, f the failed project of Dino Dash. We also had clocked in quite a few hours. Uh, we could uh, utilize technology and solutions we, we had developed for, the, 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 for Dino Dash. And being in the same genre as Fun Run, we could easily use that here as well. So basically what I want to go through now is uh, try to define what makes the core concept of Fun Run such a success, apart from the marketing side of it. If we look at the very foundational building blocks of Fun Run. And as Aurora was briefly mentioning, uh, this is in tune with our vision for Fun Run, recreate the memorable moments of gaming, of couch gaming and racing. And then for today's more convenient platform. So, first off, this is a nice quote I found from, it's a Raf Koster, I think, from an author of The Theory of Fun. Uh, Games are incredibly tasty patterns for the brain to eat up. Once we see a pattern, we delight in it, we delight in it, trace it, we delight in tracing it and seeing it reoccur. This is very foundational. Probably most of you have heard about this, but now I'm going to deconstruct the whole concept of Fun Run, and if we look at a game like this, with this uh, in mind, 
and throw in variable outcome and challenge, we got ourselves a, a game, pretty much. So if we look at Fanon, it's really, really basic. And if you imagine a, a box like that moves constantly to the right, press anywhere to jump, you have yourself an endless runner, kind of. This is something that's not very foreign to you and most mobile gamers. This might be familiar from its cannibal and probably seen it's the same mechanics. And what's interesting is that Fun Run is basically this exact same thing. We just threw in a few more uh, mechanics to spice it up and take it further. <coughs> so instead of going the endless runner, uh, down the endless runner road, we put in a finish line to get a very defined and short, uh, short session, short sessions for the, for the gameplay, threw in power-ups, and if we put in some AI contestants, we would have what you could say is a well-entertaining game within a playful theme, and yeah. But uh, it would have the competitive elements of, of a game, but if you, if you only had AI contestants, and this is the importance of, of the multiplayer, so to speak, it would be sh it's a very short-lived experience to have. If you would, you, you, the players would quickly outsmart the opponents, uh, it would quickly eat up the, the patterns, so to speak, and it would be a very, very clear lack of challenge. And then with the addition of uh, long-term goals in Fun but mostly for in our case is the customization abilities, buying new uh, clothes and visual expressions for your characters, as well as introduction of achievements and such. We add long-term goals. But if we look at this still without a multiplayer aspect, it's simply not enough. So the introduction of multiplayer to Fun Run is immense. Of, of, it's of immense import, importance. It adds the variable outcome. It adds the intense raises. You never get bored from it. You get uh, constant, uh, constant challenges. You can strive to hit the leaderboards. You can have the, the most important of it all, maybe, the social aspect, where you, uh, you outsmart others. You show off your brilliance with and every single piece of clothing you buy is a manifestation to show others how much better you are than them. And this is uh, basically what we're triggering with Fun Run, with all these very basic core ideas, very, very basic game design choices, with the carefully, uh, careful combination of multiplayer we trigger very instinctive human behavior, like the strive for competitiveness, uh, the survival to go through the races. And there's also very, very clear goals, goals and challenges. <coughs> and you have these very clear goals, the short-term uh, incentives. You have the very clearly defined set of, uh, of races. They are about one minute long. So it's very predictable, but you also have very clear long-term goals. As you see other racers, other competitors that you meet, they will have all these fancy outfits and such. And this is what we basically do at the core of the concept. We embrace its simplicity. So when we went about to, to go about to develop this sequel, we were like, with, with, with this in mind, we, we, we knew it worked. We knew what the core concept of Fun worked well. So what do we do? We don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? And you don't see Mario Kart or Gears of War, for that matter, do very drastic changes. <clears throat> so we basically set about to fix and improve the core, the, the very core of the concept of Fun Run and add all the features around it to strengthen and enhance the experience in, in the big picture. 
And another question in mind is why don't we upgrade the, the original? It was basically as it was uh, clear in the original fun one that it came off as a student project. And it also suffered a little bit from this in terms of scalability issues behind the curtains. So we didn't want, so, but basically we also felt that we had enough features planned and enough content to make it a worthy sequel to slash that two behind the name. So we wanted, we knew that we needed a graphical facelift and uh, as mentioned, it was originally a student project and it really says a lot. So we went forward with that. Here's the original fun run and the sequel. And I'll show you the quick trailer. Uh, you, you saw the fun run one trailer earlier and now we'll go through with the sequel one. So I'll be just, I'm a little bit short on time here, so I'll be just going through this a little bit faster. Uh, but all in all, the takeaways from this is that what we did in order to make it a worthy sequel was to focus a lot on the game balance itself, tighten up the level design, tighten up the gameplay, bring all the players closer together to create that very immersive and competitive-minded gameplay. We also did very thorough tweaking in terms of power-ups and deaths and timers and sat along and tweaked the numbers basically until perfection. We also had a lot of very a lot of very intriguing features that might go go by unnoticed in the big picture, but all complements the the core concept of the gameplay without altering it too much and just strengthening it all around. So basically, we embrace the simplicity of the concept. We maintain the core, we stick to the core plan, we, every single feature that goes into development strengthens the gameplay itself, because we, we would say always go gameplay first. And yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, just to round it up, um, as Aurora mentioned as well, we went to the top of the charts within 24 hours with this sequel. We have now over 13 million downloads since uh, December, with over 1 million daily active users. And we have a lot of exciting features coming ahead. And we're, looking, we're still updating with content, patches, and general feedback, uh, general features for general features for the, yeah. So, this is the end, I believe. Okay, yeah. Aurora, Frederick, thank you very much.